Hello everyone and welcome to Best Side Cycling. Today we're going to continue our video series on the Lake Washington Loop where I just show off different segments and commentate all the way through them. Today we just came from Rainier Avenue in Renton and turned onto Seward Park Avenue where we're going to ride today for 2.3 miles all the way to Seward Park. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please roll over the like button and subscribe. We cover all sorts of local Seattle cycling content and there's lots more to come. So for today, we're basically on Seward Park Avenue the whole time and it's sort of this residential artery, I'll call it. The speed limit is probably around 25 to 30 miles per hour, but as you can tell, there is quite a lot of traffic and there is no bike lanes in particular. There might be like a Cheryl here or there, but overall, you really need to, at least for this section and a lot of the southwest portion of the whole loop in general, leading up maybe all the way till you get to Madison Valley and closer to the Burke Gilman, there might not necessarily be bike lanes. So I'm going to go through here maybe a few tips of mine and sort of my thought process uh, when I ride these type of roads in order to keep safe and everything. But yeah, definitely um, the first and main thing is to be aware of your surroundings. So that for me means a few things. It means being able to uh, listen for cars uh, that are coming behind you. I also have a radar, uh, the Garmin Varia, that's super duper helpful that whenever cars are coming from behind you, it just alerts me on my computer and I can sort of get a rough gist of where you're at. But most importantly, the skill you need to have is to look back. Uh, being able to just look back and confirm when there are cars is really, really helpful. Um, having that first, first of all will just be just informing you of what to do and how to position yourself on the road. So the way that I really like to think about this is um, it's not necessarily about being as far right as you can get on a road or taking up as much as lean as you rode. It's really about finding the correct position for the circumstance and situation that you're in. So generally speaking, my philosophy around this is uh, pretty straightforward. It's you should ride in a way that guarantees your safety, but at the same time, uh, it sort of has uh, leads to the best efficiency for everyone on the road. Uh, this is a, f a few things uh, you have to think about is if you ride in a way that lets cars pass you safely, in effect, I think that also is causing you to be safer. Um, the, the most dangerous situation I find personally is when cars are just near bikes. So the less time that that will happen, uh, the better it is in my opinion. So the way that I would think about this as I'm going is generally I will ride as far right to the right road as I can, including what I like to call buffer or a escape path. So there is going to be times when there's probably maybe some crazy drivers or things that makes you need to take a face of action and having that extra maybe foot of room is I think almost life saving at times as it as a, a lot of times what happens to cyclists is not that they get hit by a car but they get ran off the road by a car and that happens just as a natural instinct sometimes or cars getting really really close and the car and, and the cyclist um, just sort of instinctively verving and uh, swerving out of the way and without that buffer zone uh, that might actually lead to just sort of self self harm and running off the road so as you can tell here there's cars parked here all the time and my main strategy around this is as i said before making sure you know your surroundings so i see if there's cars behind me and then coming in and merging well ahead of time before i need to generally speaking as you can see, cars will pass you sort of in a safe rate, uh, even if you're in the middle of the lane of the road, especially if this car is on the right. I think they, for most drivers, will understand that. And if you give them sufficient time to see you and know that you're there, uh, that should be more than fine. But when there aren't cars parked on the right here, I will stay towards the right just so that uh, cars can pass me easier. And that makes it safer, I think, for me as well. So that's sort of the way that I balance it. And I think as long as you keep those things sort of in mind, you really should be quite all right. It is can be unsettling at first, but yeah, I think it's for the most part, just trying to act sort of predictably, putting sort of your uh, 
driver cap on as well sometimes and uh, trying to make sure that you're visible to them. But anyway, we're here on the top of this, uh, in the middle of this hill. There's one hill that uh, is in this area. It's about a four, five, six percent gradient. Doesn't go for all too long, maybe a hundred odd feet. And after this, it's going to be a nice flat into a descent into Seward Park. But yeah, I'm sort of rushing it up a little bit as I really get excited over any hills. This whole section does have a slight gradient as I mentioned and I can recall when I first sort of did this ride maybe four years ago when I first very first got into cycling. This section really really tired me out. I think it's because I already was pretty wiped out as I started in the Burke Gilman. So this was already like maybe three quarters in and uh, yeah now it's a bit different but back then this area definitely <laughs> knocked my uh knocked the wind out of me a little bit but not the not to worry this section I, I think overall thinking now is not the hardest part of the whole loop it does as i mentioned does have the slight gradient but uh really that uh hill in juanita is going to be a lot of it and then there's going to be maybe one steep hill coming uh up around madison valley but here we just have some flat section to before we go down into the scent i love to hear comments about your thoughts about what, how i ride these type of roads where there's not necessarily a shoulder and there's cars parked in the way if you have any of your own safety tips please let me know um yeah it's something i do extremely often as i'm riding most of the time on the east side and on the east side you basically have to know how to ride with cars or else you're just really nowhere else to ride but remember this turn here as we turn and continue onto Seward Park Avenue. So you can look out the signs for Seward Park Avenue. We have a nice descent here all the way down to the park. So uh, now in the drops, definitely that's the way I recommend anyone to uh, do the descents in. It actually took me a while to really learn that this position is actually safer and faster and funner. Uh, I think in terms of the safety part, uh, the main thing is that it gives you a really good grip on the handlebars and in any case your one of your hand gets knocked off, you sort of have a second chance to grab it again. As well as you just have a lot better control of the brake levers. So um, I think especially for rim brake bikes where the grip can be a little bit hard, uh, using this, having more leverage onto the brakes gives you a lot better control, finer control, and then having your body lower centered of gravity, yes, it makes you go a little bit faster, um, but you'll have a lot more better control of how the bike corners and everything. Uh, you can still try to air brake by trying to have a slightly more upright position, but with all of those points I just said, um, it's definitely the way to go and something to practice if you haven't done it before. But anyway, we're here now at the Seward Park, definitely a quintessential park around here with a nice sort of loop trail around and um, it's also an awesome rest stop as there's a really good uh, bathroom around here and a lot of nice sights. So definitely we'll be continuing our series next time from here. Uh, let me know in the comments if you what, what you think of the video and yeah, I'll see you all in the next one.